Hey y'all, it is August the 11th, 2019, and y'all, as you probably figured from the title of this video, probably should get ready um, for a little bit of a story time, alright? First of all, I want to shout out, before we get into it, I want to shout out to a good internet friend of mine. And he goes by the name of Philip. I know two Philips on the internet, right? This is um, Philip, just Philip, right? I also have another internet friend by the name of Philip Andrew. He's a different guy, all right? Just to be clear about that. But the other Philip, um, maybe a couple of weeks ago now, he asked me a question through the comments. And I got to admit, you know, Philip, Philip's one of the... Um, Actually, both Phillips are one of the more deeper uh, commenters of mine. Um, cherished, they're all cherished as far as different people who I interact with on the internet. But Phillips really deep, all right? He likes to get to the heart of the matter. I forget what video he was commenting on, to be honest, but he asked me a question. I'm going to have to paraphrase it because I don't have it in front of me, but... He asked me, um, basically, where is your daughter, right? And by the way, I have a daughter. A lot of people might not know, but I do have a daughter. I brought her up plenty of times uh, upon this channel. In fact, part of the reason why I started this channel is because of my daughter, right? To have some sort of line of communication. This was years ago, all right? Actually, uh, years ago is when I started the first YouTube channel, and this is actually a different one, all right? So he asked me, um, you know, where is your daughter? It's a kind of a personal question, but it's very, it's very welcome, all right? And uh, it wasn't but a day or two after that that I, I went ahead and I tried to sit down and tell the story because I, here, here's the thing: I realized I couldn't tell you where my daughter is at. I couldn't tell you about the whole situation. Unless, of course, I told you basically my whole life story, all right? And so I attempted to do something like that um, not long after he had asked me the question, all right? I made a video, and I still actually got it um, on my laptop. I made a video, uh, you know, in which I, where I was trying to break down and describe my whole life story. And, you know, I got about an hour in before I realized I'm not even halfway done with the story, okay? And so I was like, man, this story is gonna take like three whole hours and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I stopped about an hour in. I said, okay, you know, uh, something's gotta be done here, all right? Uh, it's not really working out, all right? And this was a couple of weeks ago. Now, um, I want to shout out to another good internet friend of mine out there. He goes by many a name, all right? General Shepherd clone, uh, all sort of different General Shepherd variations. Um, sorry about that sound. You might hear that. That's my air conditioning, all right? I ain't going to turn it off because I live in San Antonio. By the way, I was born and raised in San Antonio, all right? Uh, my whole life I lived in San Antonio except for uh, about three years. Very recently, I actually moved to Big Spring, Texas. This is a town most people ain't never heard of, never will hear of it. Big Spring, Texas. It's an oil town over there in West Texas. Pretty small town, all right? Uh, it's pretty much an oil town, and they got a lot of jails there, right? Uh, very big on the methamphetamines, but I don't want to get lost up in Big Spring, Texas. Thing is, I very much enjoyed Big Spring, Texas. Very much so. Right. I wouldn't mind living there, actually, and still be living there uh, had it been economically viable for me personally to do so. But it, it turned out it wasn't, so I came back to San Antonio. That's where I'm at right now. Um, actually, a small suburb town outside of San Antonio. All right. I don't want to get too lost on that. Um, maybe a couple of days ago, actually, I think it was yesterday, a good internet friend of mine like I said, it goes by a bunch of names. The first name that I remember is Bart Fine, which I don't even think that, I'm not sure that's his real name. I'm pretty sure it's not his real name, but you know, who knows? 
All right, and Bart Frying, he reminded me of something. It's very deep, and I really appreciate it. There's a lot of things that Bart Frying has uh, brought to my desk that I really appreciate. And he said something, by the way, of, um, well, he told me to look at this video. A video is done by Coach Red Pill, or it's Coach Red Pill CRP here on YouTube. And the video itself is about done being better than perfect. Now, you don't know what I mean. A lot of people have made videos with that theme, done is better than perfect. That's for perfectionists out there. All right, meaning get it done now, today, right now. No matter what it is that you're doing, get it done now. It doesn't need to be perfect, all right? You don't know what's perfect. You're not going to ever know what's perfect until maybe after the fact. All right, but he, he drove that sentiment home. My good homie, uh, Barbara Fine, he, he told me basically, you know, done is better than perfect, all right? You need to get it done. So it got me thinking about this video and this story in particular. And I thought, you know, that's right. That is right. Done is better than perfect and I do need to get this out. It's actually crucial. It's probably one of the most crucial things that I ever put out on the internet. Believe it or not, you know, believe it or not, it is. All right, so with that being said, we're about to jump into the story. The story of my life, all right? But just to let you know, we're going to have to break it down into segments, all right? Because I can't sit here for three, four hours, you know, nonstop, dude, because I'm going to get, not bored, but it's, it's going to be too much, all right? So we're going to break it down into segments. I'm going to upload each segment as I get it done immediately. I'm not going to think about it. But eventually we're going to get through this story and everybody who goes through all these segments are going to understand perfectly where does them come from? Where is my daughter, right? Who's nine years old, by the way. Um, where is she? Why is she gone? Why is it that I don't know where she's at? How did this come to be? How is it that I, ac I accept this? Meanwhile, I'm a person out here who will uh, talk to I'm blue in the face against child abuse, against child exploitation against child neglect all right i feel like that's the biggest problem in the damn world all right how did it come to this all right let's get started without further ado here's my dang um here's my dang story and we're gonna get it started like i said i was born and raised in san antonio texas all right uh to be specific the northwest side of san antonio much like many big cities uh each side if i had to break it down i'd say the northwest side and then you got the northeast side and of course there's the north side i guess in the, in between all right but people don't really differentiate we got the northwest side we got the northeast side those are different types of places all right but they're they're both basically pretty decent as far as crime goes and stuff like that pretty decent places to raise a children and a family all right on the north side of San Antonio. Now you get down on the south side of San Antonio, it's a little bit of a different story. Uh, all right, so crime's gonna be a little bit more, and people know what I'm talking about as, when it comes to major cities. Um, the inner city obviously is pretty, you know, it's the inner city, all right? That'd be the central part, right? That's the inner city. And then, uh, I mean, just to be real brief on it, you got the west side of San Antonio, all right? There is crime there, dude. In fact, if you go into the heart of the west side of San Antonio, which I've only been there one time, and I don't plan to go back, to be honest with you, because I don't belong there, all right? But uh, that's mainly Mexican. You're gonna find um, variations here and there, but it's mainly Mexican, poverty-stricken, crime-riddled a lot of the times. And then you got the east side of San Antonio. Just to be real brief on it, that's mainly black folks, all right? And like I said, you're gonna have, you're gonna find variations. You're gonna find Mexicans there. You're gonna find white people there. You're gonna find Asian people there, but it's mostly black folks, right? And I don't want to be too. I don't want to get stuck on it. And no, I'm not a. I'm not a racist or whatever. I'm not a white su supremacist. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the story, all right? Um, that the east side of San Antonio also very dangerous and treacherous. You don't want to be there if you don't belong there. I promise you, and you probably don't want to be there either dang way, all right? The Lord knows I don't go to the east side of San Antonio, all right? I don't stick around. If I'm going through there, I'm driving through there about as fast as I can, all right? 
Um, that's San Antonio in a nutshell if you were to break it down. But if I'm talking specifically, and we're going to talk about it probably later on in the story, um, I'm talking specifically the northwest side of San Antonio. Now, when I was a young kid, it was still being developed. I mean, San Antonio has grown into a monster that even since I was a little kid, almost totally different. It's almost a totally different place. It's blown up. All right. And even before I, I was born and stuff, San Antonio, it was a lot more rural and stuff like that. It's been developing like crazy my whole life. All right. But on the northwest side of San Antonio, I was born and raised in a particular neighborhood. It's called um, Hidden Meadows, for those who are familiar. A lot of people outside of Hidden Meadows come out of Hidden Meadows. Like I said, it's not the ghetto necessarily but it is kind of ghetto in a sense you know nobody's going to take that away from me all right it's people trying to come up it's not people who've come up you want people who come up back in that day you were going to the northeast side all right now in the northwest side you do have people who kind of came up the neighborhoods are a little bit more fancier and stuff like that you'll find a lot bigger homes and stuff on the northwest side all right but back in that day we're talking the early early 90s Right, I was actually born in 86, but we're talking about mainly the early, early 90s because that's what I have memories of. I was born into a neighborhood called the Hidden Meadows, and a lot of people joke around and they call it the Hidden Ghettos. <laughs> all right, but um, all right, just to explain briefly, and we're going to touch upon it a lot later. Um, on my particular block, there might have been... Uh, 30 some odd houses, 30 to 35 houses on that particular block. Had a cul-de-sac at the end, you know, it's just a little block, an offshoot, all right? About 30 to 35 houses. Now, considering these 30 to 35 houses, there was children everywhere, all right? Just to let you know. And just to be very specific so that you know, on that particular block, 30, 35 houses, there was children of every race that you could think of. I promise you, I mean, there was white folks, brown folks, black folks, there was Asian type folks, there was Middle Eastern type folks on that block. I remember it. All right. So that's that's where I come from and stuff like that. People like to consider uh, people from not from Texas like to consider uh, some sort of racist thing and, and racial segregation. Not really like that where I come from. Not at all. In fact, when I was a kid, never thought about it. All right, especially when I was a young kid, I grew up on that block, never thought about it. Why would you think about it if you grew up on a block that had basically every race you could think of? All right, but I, I bring up that block for another reason. It was a little block, 30, 35 houses, and there it, it was an offshoot of a larger block that uh, of a larger street, if you will, that curved all the way around and had little streets. If you can imagine a kind of a big circle, uh, and this is part of Hidden Meadows, a big circle, and there's and there's all sort of blocks in between it, all right? So when you get off of my block uh, when I was growing up, you'll come past uh, a couple of different houses immediately, all right? One of those houses um, immediately as you get off my block had uh, one of my best friends as a, a little kid growing up. His name was Jordan. All right, we're not going to get too much into his story. But uh, once you get off the block, there was a guy named Jordan. And he was one of my best friends and stuff. And right maybe two doors down from him was a guy who would become like brothers with me. I mean, we came up. We still talk to each other all the time. We are, I mean, I swear I'll punch you in the throat. Don't ever talk about this guy. Don't ever talk about him bad. All right, his name's El Nino, and I bring him up a lot. Um, okay. A couple doors down, there was El Nino, but that wasn't his name yet. His name's Andrew. And then maybe, I think next door, if you were to go one more house over, you had a young girl by the name of Caricia. All right. And Caricia, I, you know, I knew these people. Like, I was always kind of a, off to my own, you know, kind of a loner, if you will, an introvert, if you must. But I knew these people, and they knew me, all, just to be brief, going, growing up all throughout school, even though I was, you know, in big uh, schools, like um, 5A high school type deal, 
I mean, like, a lot of children. I mean, there's so many schools in San Antonio because there's so many children, all right? We have, I wouldn't say unbelievable, but we have so many dang schools, all right? <clears throat> but that's kind of beside the point. Like I said, there was a young girl named Caricia, right? And, and I knew all these people. They knew me. I was kind of a loner, like I said, all right? But I've always known these people. I mean, Caricia, I haven't seen or talked to in a long, long time. Caricia had a friend, all right? And, well, she had many friends, all right? As you can imagine. But one friend in particular would um, grow up to be my wife, all right? And her name's Ashley, by the way, all right? Yeah, let's go ahead and get that out of the way. One of her friends' name was Ashley, all right? I knew Ashley by way of Caricia. She was like a person I knew through a person, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, I knew Ashley since I was real little, right? A lot of, a lot of the people, it's like we went to a elementary together, right? All these people, because they, they lived right by me. Ashley, she lived off further. I don't even remember what ho house or what neighborhood she lived in, because I, I didn't know her back then, really. I knew of her. Didn't know where she lived and stuff like that. But I knew of her, this young girl named Ashley. She's friends with Caricia, who is friends with Andrew, who I was good friends with. I was good friends with Jordan. They were all pretty good friends. And so I knew Caricia. I knew Ashley through Caricia. I knew of her, all right? All since through elementary. Now, people who went to my elementary, typically they went to my middle school, all right? Just because we were in such close proximity. And then typically we would go to the same high school unless they went to some sort of like uh, magnet high school and stuff, which some people did. All right. <clears throat> all right. So to break it down about Ashley, uh, all throughout elementary school, I didn't really know her. We didn't really talk to each other too much. There wasn't very much interaction between us, but I knew of her. And I got to just let you know, had I never um, spoken to Ashley ever, ever again or seen her around after elementary school, I know for a fact that I would have never forgot Ashley. Just would have never forgot her. You know, it's just something about her. I mean, uh, there's certain things about her that were pretty memorable. It's almost hard to put my, my tongue on it. Just very memorable about her. But especially her bowl haircut, which she got a lot of uh, grief uh, over, um, you know, from uh, fellow students and classmates and stuff. Always got grief over it. I'm talking about a bowl haircut, dude. It looked like from out of the Beatles or something. It was ridiculous. A lot of people made fun of her over it. Uh, I personally didn't make fun of her over it. I didn't really know her all that well, right? Just barely acquainted. But like I said, I would have never forgot her. Right? I know that I know that for a fact actually because all right we actually uh, went to sc uh, middle school together very briefly very briefly me and uh, me and Ashley and I remember seeing her around middle school this was in sixth grade I remember seeing her around middle school all right and I just briefly want to share a story of and I think it's going to be significant of a Bible study that I was invited to, all right? Um, you know, back then, uh, just to be real brief on it, I was uh, born and raised into a family it wasn't church-going, wasn't a church-going family at all. That, that issue was never pressed in my childhood. I actually went to a Sunday school for about a year, and I'm not even sure why. All right, so uh, when I reached middle school, no interest in it. I, at all. I was never taught to have interest in it. But I remember seeing Ashley um, uh, during a Bible study that was held before school. All right. I remember seeing Ashley in that Bible study. Now, here's the thing. They got me roped into coming to the Bible study uh, in a particular way, which they do a lot, I'm sure, all over by promising donuts, right, and juice. <laughs> and so when I heard uh, people uh, promising donuts, if you come to the Bible study, thing is, Caricia actually approached 
my man Andrew El Nino and say, hey, look, you and your friend, you, uh, you want to come to this Bible study? We're going to learn about the Bible and stuff like that. I was like, well, pff, whatever. And she's like, it's going to be donuts and orange juice. And I said, we're going. Let's go. Let's go there. All right. So we did. We did go to that Bible study. And I remember vividly Ashley being there. I remember that vividly. Right. Um, I never went back to another Bible study. It kind of bored me. It kind of bored the crap out of me. The donuts were delicious, all right, but it wasn't worth it to go back. But it's because of that memory in specific that I know Ashley went um, to our middle school. I remember her being there at that particular Bible study. I think it's relevant that I mentioned that uh, when it comes to elementary school, middle school, and even high school, I vaguely remember any of it. It was like I was going through a fog, dude. I don't remember. I don't have many memories from school at all. And so I don't even know what to think about that. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure how that happened, but I don't hardly have any memories of school. Little tidbits. So it's kind of significant that I remembered that Bible study in particular. And I remembered that Ashley was there. All right. <clears throat> Ashley, after sixth grade, wound up disappearing, and we're going to talk about that later, just off the face of the earth. Now, I was very um, only loosely acquainted with Ashley, so it didn't really phase me. Come seventh grade, come eighth grade, and from then on out, never saw Ashley, all right? But only because I was only slightly acquainted with her did it not really face me. I don't really think about it at all that much. I never I never asked anybody, hey, where's that girl Ashley? Where'd she go? I never asked nobody. It was, it's not important to me necessarily. All right. <clears throat> really wasn't that important to me. But then I went through the rest of school. And we might touch upon a little events here and there throughout my school career. But suffice it to say, I saw Ashley during none of this time. Through the rest of middle school and the rest of high school, she straight up disappeared, all right? And we're going to leave it at that, at this particular stage in the story. And actually, I'm messing up the sequence, but it's relevant that I bring up um, my childhood a little bit more, all right, before we move on and cut to the next segment of this story. Uh, my childhood, just to touch upon a couple of details, a few significant details. Uh, like I said, born and raised in San Antonio, a family with a mother and a father who were married. I mean, by the time I was born, they were married. In fact, to be honest with you, I think they got married uh, while they were pregnant with me. All right. <laughs> it's one of those deals. Um, but okay. I also have an older brother. All right. And we're going to touch upon like the racism and the fact is I don't even believe in racism. Probably more towards uh, going throughout this story. But my older brother, although it's really nobody's business, kind of significant to the story, is a brown fella. All right. Uh, as you might infer, he's my half brother. All right. Uh, but yeah, my older brother is a brown fella. He's kind of a short guy. He's definitely shorter than me. Uh, he's kind of a little guy, but he's always been very athletic, man. And the thing is, I always looked up to him coming up as a kid, as, as most people do with their older brothers. I mean, I really looked up to this guy, all right? So as far as racism being inbred into me, it, guess what? There was never a chance. It was never a chance for that. He was kind of my idol, my, my older brother, you know, as a lot of people have experience with. I mean, for example, when I was a little kid, if my older brother did it, I had to do it, all right? Just to give a couple of examples, my brother went down to the end of the block to hang out with his friends. I would be asking my parents, hey, can I go? Can I go too? And I wouldn't even ask my older brother. I would be asking my parents. I'd be like, hey, can I go with, can I go with my, I guess I'll miss, mention his name is John. Uh, can I go with them? And then they would have to ask my older brother if it's all right, if I could go with them. If I could go with my older brother to hang out with his friends, all right? My older brother, like, when I was real little, I was four or five years old, my older brother, who is about three or four years older than me, uh, later on down the line, we'd, ha uh, we'd have um, uh, our younger brother. My younger brother, he's my 
full-blooded brother between my mom and my dad, all right? And that was about three or four years later, and so that's to explain the separation of age between me and my older brother and my younger brother, all right? But I was about four or five years old when my older brother, he wanted to play soccer, all right? Uh, I like to call it football, but I don't want to get you confused. He wanted to play soccer, and so I had to play soccer, you know, that's how it went. If my older brother did it, I had to do it. My older brother had a peanut butter jelly sandwich. I, I want a peanut butter jelly sandwich. All right? That is how it went. All right? But like I said, he's my half-brother. And back then, when you're little kids, you don't think about that sort of stuff. It doesn't cross your mind. It doesn't face it, especially when people don't bring it up. All right? I don't remember exactly when I... They figured out when everybody figured out, okay, we're half brothers, all right, because he's a totally different color than me. Um, I just thought I would bring that up, and it's definitely going to be necessary. It's going to be very significant to explain to y'all that. And before we cut off this video, I do want to mention it's going to be very significant that my older brother, he's never met his father. Never. He never knew his father, all right? Where his father went, psh, I don't know. That's something that our parents never brought up, ever, right? I mean, they might have talked about it just about as quick as they could and squashed it. They they never brought it up. And to this day, I got I to gotta let you know, I'm 32 years old. My older brother has never met his father. All right, and I've talked to him briefly about it. He never wants to meet his father. There's no desire to meet his father, okay? Um... It was never encouraged for him to ever meet his father. It was just something that never happened. All right. And that's going to prove to be very, very significant in many different ways. All right. Throughout my whole life. All right. Um, so we're going to leave off on that note. All right. And I'll see y'all back on the next segment. I'm kind of leaving a cliffhanger. You really don't know where this is going. But on the next segment, we're going to, of course, talk about when I meet my wife again, all right, it was a long time later, a long time later, it was actually after my brief stint in college, when I run back into my wife again, all right, it was actually at a workplace, but I'll explain it uh, on the next segment of my videos, all right? So you stay tuned and stuff. We're gonna get all the way through this, all right? For the people who wanna sit through this, you're gonna understand exactly where I come from. You're gonna probably understand exactly why my thought press process works the way it does. You're gonna understand exactly why I don't know where my daughter is. Yes, I have love for my daughter, all right? Uh, my daughter's my favorite person in the world, and it's not even close, all right? But no, I haven't seen her for, over five years now. That might sound tragic. In, in lots of sense, it is, it is tragic. All right, but there's reasons for this. There's reasons for it. So we're going to get down to the bottom of it. I appreciate you for hanging on. And uh, if it takes hours and hours, we're going to get through uh, my whole life story. All right. So I appreciate you. And I'll holler at y'all a little bit later. <laughs>